Captivating. Compelling. Enthralling. Are just some of the many words that you would not use to describe the 2020 Belgian Grand Prix. Even Max Verstappen said post-race that settling into third position had been incredibly boring and not particularly enjoyable. But what we do enjoy is looking at the new bits and pieces that the teams have brought, and Belgium is a traditional venue in which we see a plethora of parts making it to the track for the first time. Mercedes in particular brought a plentiful supply of new aerodynamic additions for the Belgian Grand Prix, as it sought to extend its already large advantage over the rest of the field, setting up the car for the lower drag conditions of the spa Francorchamps circuit. Lewis Hamilton's performance in qualifying was masterful, outqualifying teammate Valtteri Bottas by over half a second to secure yet another Mercedes front row lockout, and Hamilton led the race from start to finish. Let's take a look at Mercedes' new parts, but first, let's draw some attention to the AH19 logo on the nose, in tribute to Antoine Hubert, who passed away this time last year in the Spa F2 race, and who will never be forgotten. At the front of the car, the nose area has a reprofiled pair of winglets, which sweep further back in comparison to the previous design. This allows it to interact with the new veins attached to the side of the chassis, which help to turn the airflow downwards towards the bargeboard area. The bargeboards have been changed too, and have been mounted a bit further back for the Belgian Grand Prix. This improves the lower drag characteristics of the car, although the team has not wished to compromise too much on complexity, the bargeboards occupying less space on the car should help to keep its drag output in check. The mounting point is different too. The curved leading edge profile has been replaced with a straighter edge component, set back further. Of course, all of these changes towards the front will have an impact on the airflow patterns further back, and Mercedes has continued to ring the changes around the side pods too. The turning vanes in front of the side pod inlet have now received a re-angled fin within, and looking further down, the lowest horizontal element on the vanes themselves has been removed. This is to make room for an additional L-shaped vein underneath helping to offer more control over the airflow passing around the side pod undercut. The side pod inlets themselves have been enlarged slightly, opening up the secondary holes below the crash structure to marginally improve the cooling performance of the car. On the floor, the team has also added fins to work with the slots along the rear of the floor and helps to drive airflow around the rear tyres, a part of the car that will be removed in 2021 to cut back on the amount of downforce produced. This helps to limit the impact of the tyres rotation on the diffuser, maintaining the downforce at the rear. That's offset by the reduction in the size of the rear wing, as teams commonly run low downforce packages at the Spa circuit owing to the rapid first and third sectors, where top speeds can make all of the difference. The main plane was raised in order to help Mercedes generate a few extra kilometres an hour on the straights and at Blanchimont, cutting the frontal area of the car to limit the drag produced. The T-wing was also removed from the car for this round, as it produces surplus downforce and removing it trims off further drag. This drag trimming process extended to the trailing edge of the rear wing too, and Mercedes ran without the gurney flap on the top wing element. Although an efficient way to improve downforce, it also produces extra drag too, so removing it is a sensible move at a circuit like Spa. The team also switched back to the single pillar rear wing mounting for this one, having used the double swan neck mountings at Barcelona. While it's commonly agreed that teams have to dial back the drag at Spa and will have to go even further for the next round at Monza, there were plenty of different rear wing solutions on show. Red Bull had the raised outboard sections on its main plane to keep downforce for the middle sector, but sacrificed the inefficient parts of the wing to cut the drag. Meanwhile, Renault impressed at Spa, with the RS20 clearly suiting the high-speed circuits. The team was able to run with a very skinny rear wing to further improve its straight-line performance. The car was particularly impressive in being able to save its tyres. On the final lap of the race, Daniel Ricciardo was able to secure the point for fastest lap, and took 10 seconds out of Max Verstappen on the final four tours of the circuit. With Monza coming up in which Renault scored its best result of the season last year, the low drag performance of the car could potentially yield the first podium for the team since it took over Lotus at the end of 2015. Giving Ricardo has a bet on with team principal Cyril Beatball, where both will get matching tattoos if Renault gets a podium this year, there's plenty of incentive for the team to make it onto the rostrum, as if the rewards of performing well in F1 weren't enough of an incentive, of course. The disappointment of Spa, of course, was Ferrari and the team experimented with an ultra-low downforce rear wing on Friday to try and find a bounce for the weekend. It then added a little more downforce for Saturday onwards, but we might see that skinny wing again next weekend. The draggy SF1000 and the disappointing 2020 Ferrari power unit created a perfect storm for Ferrari at Spa, 
and neither Sebastian Vettel or Charles Leclerc could manage to trouble the scorers. If the team can't find a turnaround for its poor pace at Spa, then it's going to look very exposed for its home race at Monza. It'll arguably be a good job that the Tifosi won't be in the house to see it.